Hello all, welcome to this video on Network Programming Lab. Today I will be talking about Distance Vector Routing Protocol and its implementation in C. Distance Vector means the routers are advertised as vectors of distance and direction. Direction is represented by the next hope address and exit interface, whereas distance uses metrics such as a hope count. Routers using Distance Vector Routing Protocol do not have knowledge of the entire path to a destination. Examples of distance vector routing protocols include Routing Information Protocol version 1 and 2 and IGRP which is Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. Updates are performed periodically where all or part of the router's routing table is sent to all of its neighbors that are configured to use the same distance vector routing protocol. Once a router has this information, it is able to amend its own routing table to reflect the changes and then inform its neighbors of the changes. This process has been described as routing by rumor because routers are relying on the information they receive from other routers and cannot determine if the information is actually valid and true. Distance vector routing protocol uses the Bellman Ford algorithm to calculate paths. Now looking into some of the limitations of this method. It does not prevent routing loops from happening and suffer from the count to infinity problem. The core of the count to infinity problem is that if A tells B that it has a path somewhere, there is no way for B to know if the path has B as a part of it. To see the problem clearly, imagine a subnet that is connected as A, B, C, D, E, F. And let the metric between the routers be the number of hopes. Now suppose that A goes down. In the vector update process, B will notice that the root to A, which was at distance 1, is down. B does not receive the vector update from A. The problem is, B gets an update from C and C is not aware of the fact that A is down. So it tells B that A is only two hopes from C, which is false. This slowly propagates through the network until it reaches infinity. In which case the algorithm corrects itself using a relaxed property used in Bellman Ford algorithm. Relaxation is the most important step in Bellman Ford. It is what increases the accuracy of the distance to any given hope. Relaxation works by continuously shortening the calculated distance between hopes, comparing that distance with other known distances. Some partial solutions are available. Routing information protocol, which is an example of distance vector routing protocol, uses split horizon with poison reverse technique to reduce the chance of forming loops and uses a maximum number of hope to counter the count to infinity problem. These measures avoid the formation of routing loops in some but not all the cases. The addition of a hold time that is refusing the route updates for a few minutes after a route retraction avoids loop formation in virtually all cases but causes a significant increase in convergence times. A number of loop free distance vector protocols such as EIGRP and DSDV have been developed. These avoid loop formation in all the cases but suffer from increased complexity. Now let us look into what dynamic programming is. If a problem can be divided into sub-problems which in turn are divided into smaller sub-problems and if there is overlapping among these sub-problems then the solution to these can be saved for future reference. In this way, the efficiency of the CPU can be enhanced. This method of solving a solution is referred to as dynamic programming. Bellman Ford algorithm is an example of dynamic programming. It starts with a starting vertex and calculate the distance of other vertices that can be reached by one inch. It then continues to find a path with two edges and so on. It follows a bottom-up approach. 
This algorithm also works on graphs with a negative edge weight cycle. That is, a cycle of edges with weights that sum to a negative number. Now this algorithm is optimal for distributed systems. Looking into its space complexity, it is big O of V. Its worst case time complexity is big O of V3. Average case time complexity is big O of E, V. And best case time complexity is big O of E. Now let us go through the logic of how this protocol can be implemented in C. We begin by creating a network. So in the Bellman Ford algorithm, it is described as a graph. So network will be used as an equivalent to a graph. Since a graph has vertices and edges, a network will have hopes and links. So it is created by using a structure. So the structure is named network and it has hopes which are h and l number of links both are integers and each link has certain properties related to it so i have created another structure for link since link is a structure that will also be included as part of the network structure here now the properties of a link in this program is the hope from where the link starts, the destination to which it is pointing and the weight associated with that particular link. After that, all the distances will be initialized to a maximum value and the distance from the source to itself will be set as zero. Now in C, there is a macro known as int max. So what it does is, it is a macro that is setting a particular variable in such a way that it cannot have a higher value than int max. For this, header files like limits.h and standardlib.h can be included. Now the value of int max will vary from compiler to compiler. This process of setting each of the distances to the max value is done using a loop in which the number of hopes is set as the limit. Similarly, the distance from source to itself will be set as zero. Next process is the updation of distance. For this, two loops are needed. The outer loop will work based on the number of hopes and the inner loop will have the number of links as its limit. Each link is taken. As I have said already, link has three properties, the hope, destination and weight. I have declared three variables locally in order to store these three values that is u, v and w, t. Next step is the distance from that particular u that is the hope, the starting point of that link is added along with the weight. And what is checked here is as we already said there is a distance that is set. Uh, in initially, we set it to a max value. Now, this will be modified each time this loop runs. So, what it does is, it is checking if that distance which is already stored is greater than the value of distance from this source and this weight added together. If it is so, that is, this value will be lesser then the distance of v that is the distance to the destination is modified because we have found a shorter path than the existing distance so this is repeated until all the hopes and links are traversed finally we will perform one more loop checking where we have the 
number of links as the limit. The same process as we saw before is done here. Each link is taken. Its properties like the hope, destination and weight are stored into local variables. Again the distance is compared. And here the case is, if we get a distance lesser than the existing distance. So if this condition is true again, after traversing all those loops, then that means the network contains a negative weight cycle. A message is printed accordingly. Now this is the program. Uh, the structure for link network. Then inside the program, the user is asked to enter the number of hopes. So this is the example we are considering here. It, it has five hopes and six links. These data will be taken from the user and stored in H and L. Then the structure network and all other structures are created dynamically using mlloc that is why standard library is included here so that is done for link and network structure then the information regarding each link is taken that is its source destination and weight then the updation of distance is performed before that all the distances are set to the maximum and the distance from the source to the source will be set as zero finally one more loop checking is done to check if there is a negative weight cycle. So if we still have a smaller distance after all this comparison is done, it can happen only when the network has a negative weight cycle. Finally, each hope and its distance from the source is printed. Here, zero is the source, so in the result, each of the hopes will be printed and its distance from the source. This is how a sample output looks like. Now we look into a demo of the same. This is a program that I explained before. Taking the terminal and compiling the program. After successful compilation, we run the program. The inputs given here are the number of vertices, which is the number of hopes, and the number of links, and the information regarding each link. That is 5, 6, and the information of each link. So, before that, we also mention the source. So here, 0 is the source. Each of the metric regarding a link is separated by a space. After the information about a particular link is entered, we press enter. This is repeated for all the 6 links. So this is the final answer. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.